I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. How do you know if you are following God or not? Jesus answers this question when he said, Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. In other words, to follow God is to love. But our love should not be stagnant. It must grow. In his letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul says, Speaking in love, we must grow up in every way into Christ. St. Augustine, in his confession, said, describes how most of us never grew up, but to the end of life keeping strenuously playing the old nursery games with slightly different toys and counters, gold and money replacing the earlier marbles. Today, we see the same mentality on car bumper stickers. He who dies with most toys wins. As any parent knows, even the most popular toy eventually becomes uninteresting. Remember that first bicycle which you rode so much that mum almost had to open the drive through window to make sure you ate dinner? Is it collecting dust in the corner of your garage? Remember the Atari 2600 computer game system that used to be so exciting? Where is it now? We may outgrow these toys, but we never outgrow Jesus. Jesus calls us to continually improve our relationship with him. So let's look at the following story. Come follow me. Once upon a time, there was a man who looked upon Christmas as a lot of humbug. He wasn't uh, a scorch. He was a very kind and decent person, generous to his family, upright in all his dealings with other men, but he didn't believe all that stuff about an incarnation which church proclaims at Christmas. And he was too honest to pretend that he did. I am truly sorry to distress you, he told his wife, who was a faithful churchgoer. But I simply cannot understand this claim that God became man. It doesn't make any sense to me. On Christmas Eve, his wife and children went to church for the midnight service. He declined to accompany them. I'd feel like a hypocrite, he exclaimed. I'd much rather stay at home, but I'll wait up for you. Shortly after his family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window and watched the flurries getting heavier and heavier. If we must have a Christmas, he reflected, it's nice to have a white one. He went back to his chair by the fireside and began to read his newspaper. A few minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound. It was quickly followed by another, then another. He thought that someone must be throwing snowballs at his living room window. When he went to the front door to investigate, he found the flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. They had been caught in the storm and in a desperate search for shelter had tried to fly through his window. I can't let those poor creatures lie there and freeze, he thought, but how can I help them? Then he remembered the barn where the children's pony was stabled. It would pro provide a warm shelter. He quickly put on his coat and galoshes and tramped through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide and turned on the light, but the birds didn't come in. Food will bring them in he thought. So he hurried back to the house for bread crumbs, which he sprinkled on the snow to make a trail into the barn. To his dismay, the birds ignored the bread crumbs and continued 
to flop around helplessly in the snow. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around and waving his arms. They scattered in every direction, except into the warm, lighted barn. They find me a strange and terrifying creature, he said to himself, and I can't seem to think of any way to let them know they can trust me. If only I could be a bird myself for a few minutes, perhaps I could lead them to safety. Just at that moment, the church bells began to ring. He stood silently for a while, listening to the bells pealing the glad tidings of Christmas. Then he sank to his knees in the snow. Now I understand, he whispered. Now I see why you had to do it. So following God is very similar. We are his loving children. We should obey and respect him through our actions. Love and follow God with all your heart. Let us pray together. My Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us how to be obedient children to you. Help me, Lord, to follow you till the end of times. Thank you.